Hey guys, this is Colossals for another Grinders Cool short video and in this video I am going to talk about how to play a top pair type of hands in position and what we have to do or what we have to take into account when uh, the unfortunate uh, draw gets there which our opponent might have been chasing. So today I'm going to uh, solely talk about uh, how to play top air in position. Um, the out of position um, video will uh, guess, uh, come out later, I, I still have to do it. I also believe that uh, other uh, grinder school instructors are making uh, similar kind of videos. So you can compare some of, uh, I haven't watched any of their videos, uh, so you can compare some of the thoughts uh, that I have com uh, with the uh, other grinder school instructors and uh, see uh, which kind of style fits best, uh, fits, fits best with yours or um, maybe I can learn something uh, from other uh, from uh, the insights of other instructors we'll see about this so anyway uh, when we play top parent position we actually have uh, three types of situation either we are raised from late position or from early position and we get called from the blinds another situation is that somebody uh, that we call an early position raise from late position so somebody raises from early position and uh, we call uh, from the button uh, with uh, a hand now this situation is going to come this situation is not going to uh, uh, come in frequently just because I'm not a huge fan well I'm uh, completely not a fan of uh, cold calling in Texas Hall'em uh, as, uh, the, the, the situations when I would call a cold call uh, in position is like when I have like drawing type of hands like sets for uh, well uh, small pocket pairs medium pocket pairs I will call an early position raise just uh, just uh, to set mine sometimes I will call uh, with uh, suited connectors if I have a clear view on how my opponent is playing and I'm uh, pretty confident in my own game so that I can outplay him but uh, essentially I am not calling early position raises uh, w with a broad range unless I can flop like another type of hands uh, so this situation is going to come uh, the second situation here is going uh, come to uh, come in infrequently the third situation is uh, another situation which comes uh, which uh, at, at definitely at the micro stakes which uh, will come in frequently is when you ice race somebody limps in from early position you ice race him uh, from late position and he calls and again uh, we have a situation in which we uh, might flop top pair and uh, we have position uh, the first uh, situation and the third situation are kind of similar in the sense that the the, uh, the range of hands that you will get called with uh, in the first and in the third situation are uh, quite broad. Now, um, these are the three situations when uh, we're going to play top parent position. Uh, and here uh, I have a slide which tells you what you have to take into account before you place your C bet because essentially we ice race so we have the initiative so we're gonna uh, we're gonna see that or we raised from uh, late position or early position and we got call from the blinds so again we have the initiative so usually we are going to be the ones uh, are, uh, who are going to do the c-betting so what do we take into account before we uh, make even a c-bet first I'm gonna go over this really uh, fast flop textures dry wet uh, go ahead uh, c-bet a, a king nine deuce uh, kind of flop because it's really dry even if you didn't hit um, the, the flop is king high and your opponent really needs to have hit something and the chances that they hit something with his preflop op uh, with his preflop calling range are uh, pretty uh, pretty slim so go ahead uh, see that uh, dry flops uh, a case in which I wouldn't see that the flop is when we have a wet flop uh, let's say I raise uh, ace jack from the cutoff and the flop comes uh, I get called from a big blind and the flop comes 6, 7, 8 and there's a flush draw these are the type of flops that I wouldn't uh, see bet uh, the flop is really wet he's gonna call me with a 
huge amount of his preflop calling range and I'm gonna be uh, I, I, I mean I, I'm just not gonna fold I'm not gonna fold him out and I'm gonna have to check the turn and fold the river if I don't hit an ace or a jack and uh, even then uh, uh, one thing I want to say is uh, even when the board is wet and you check uh, the flop back you don't see that you take the flop back and your opponent checks the turn to you Usually, like 99% of the time, it means they have nothing. Uh, and then, then these are the situations where I would bet the turn, even if the f even if it's wet, and I probably would bet the river uh, too, just because usually when people ch check two times out of position to you without the initiative, they have nothing. So check check means uh, means go ahead, uh, bet, and uh, take the pot away from me. I don't want it. So another thing we have to take into account before we see bet and uh, before we go uh, onto the turn and the river is how our opponent is playing. Is he playing loose or tight? I'm not gonna uh, spend too much talk about uh, this. It's fairly obvious. Uh, and another f uh, thing you have to take into account is whether we raised from early position or we raised from late position. By this I mean when we raised from early position, a thinking player is not going to call us from the blind suites like ace 10 offsuit. This in contrary to uh, the situation where we raise from the button and the same thinking player is probably thinking that our, ra our raising range is really wide on the button so he might actually be calling with ace 10 offsuit from the blinds in that situation so also keep in mind where you are sitting where you were where you were positioned when you make the raise because this also takes um, uh, this also uh, is uh, important in your decision whether to see bet and uh, how to continue post flop. So actually, we can distinguish six different types of situations. So, for instance, we can have raised from early position. A tight player might have called us from the blinds, and the flop uh, might have come dry. So that's one situation. Actually, we have more than uh, six situations. Uh, yeah, well, there are. Uh, let me think, there are nine, one, two, three, two, 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 eight different situations actually. You can raise from a late position, a loose player called from the blinds, you have a wet board. Well, you can uh, make all kinds of different type of situations with these three factors that you have to take in account. Now, one golden rule is, and I'm telling this to a lot of my students, is you always have to ask yourself, how am I going to extract the most value out of my opponent's entire hand range? And with the entire, is in capital letters, because you have to take into account that his flop hand range is no different than his pre-flop hand range. It's, there, was, there hasn't been any action yet. Whether the flop comes ace, jack, deuce, or four, five, six, he has the same range of hands still than he had preflop with and our goal is to extract the most value out of your opponent's entire hand range whether he has pocket deuces ace jack he can have seven eight suited deuces uh, ace jack and we're gonna try to get the most value out of that that type of hand range uh, this is really important uh, to take into account now, okay, I'm gonna start off with an example here. Let's say we have ace queen offsuit and we raise from the cutoff and the big blind calls. Uh, standard situation flop comes, queen seven deuce, yuppie, uh, we flopped uh, top pair. Uh, and actually, we flopped top pair, top kicker. And uh, first assessment that we make, the flop is very dry. Second uh, assessment we have to make is um, how is our opponent playing? Uh, is he a tight player? Is he a loose player? Uh, since we raised, uh, and the, the first uh, factor we have to take into account is uh, our uh, our position when we raised, and we raised from late position, so our opponent's range is going to be broader than if we have than if we would have raised from early position, just as I explained before. So uh, I want to mention. Uh, I want to mention here that versus a loose player, 
I wouldn't take too much into account from which position I raised because they just look at their hands uh, whether you raised from uh, under the gun or you raised from the cutoff for a loose player like a 40 15 type of guy it doesn't really matter he's gonna call from the blinds no matter what position you raise with uh, I'm putting this here especially when he's tight because players who have uh, some sense of how to play uh, will fold uh, is 10 offsuit but they probably will call is 10 uh, they will fold is 10 offsuit when you called uh, when you raise from early position but they will fold it when you raise from uh, late position and this immediately gives us the opportunity to value bet both against the loose player especially against the loose player but also against um, the the tie player because this means that the tie player is going to have like queen jack in his range queen 10 in his range king queen in his range much more likely than uh, he is when uh, we would have raised from early position because he's gonna be a lot more careful with queen 10 queen jack versus an early position raise uh, compared to a, a late position raise anyway um, so we have the situation so what I want to say here is whether the guy is loose or tight we are value betting here with our top pair top kicker I think everybody uh, pretty much agrees with this now we are definitely betting the flop on most cases there is no flush draw there are no straight out uh, we um, actually I would say bet the flop and change here bet the turn on most case on almost any case and the river depends a lot on the board run out and also on your opponent so I have like three different types of board run outs here uh, let's say the jack comes off on the turn um, I would still uh, I would still bet in any case um, versus the loose opponent and versus uh, the tight opponent there's still a, a whole lot of hands that are going to call us uh, in their uh, in their in their uh, in their range, so I would still be value betting versus the tie player and uh, the loose player. Now on the river, however, when the king comes off, I would be much less inclined uh, to be betting against the tie player. Uh, I might, and even against the loose player, the board run out is really bad because all the queens. Now, except for queen 9, queen 10 uh, might still call, um, but queen jack got there, like king queen now beats us too. Like, he might have actually hit some weird, like, king type of hands. So, I would be really careful against the needy player, and actually, against the needy player on the first board run out, I would uh, be checking back. Against the loose player, it's about 50 50. We still get called by queen 10, queen 9. So, I would go ahead and value bet. Uh, it, it's gonna be a, a quite a thin value bet, but uh, I, I think it's quite okay uh, to value bet there. On the second board run out, actually, the king comes first on the turn, and then the jacks comes in. Uh, this is different uh, versus the needy type of uh, player I would check the turn the reason for this is the king card if he calls the flop uh, he probably has something he might have like pocket tens, pocket nines uh, pocket jacks, queen jack, queen ten, uh, king queen uh, all type of hands that call a flop bet but now when the king comes off he's gonna fold if we bet this king because it's also a scare card for him and it's also a scare card for us but he doesn't know that um, so I would check back the turn and if he check back the river to us I uh, probably make a value bet um, again it's pretty close because the jack came there but uh, I would be value betting against the loose player I would be value betting uh, on the turn and I would be the river again is uh, pretty close. These are the type of situations where you can't go really anymore for three streets of value with a top pair type of hands. Just because you don't beat a lot of their top pair type of hands and they're falling all their medium pair type of hands. Like, I was going to say, like, f four years ago I would be betting for three streets uh, in these situations, but not anymore. People have become smarter and... Uh, I would uh, I, I would go for three, two streets and um, be happy uh, about.
about it. On the third situation, actually, when like the board runouts doesn't really change anything, I would be um, betting for again for definitely two streets against the nit and for three streets against the loose guy. Uh, why am I s and even the third street versus the nit might uh, be good because he's I, I don't think he can fold queen jack probably he is though he's not gonna pay you off with top pair medium kicker versus a needy guy so I would be happy already if I got two streets of value versus a nit and I would definitely go for three streets of value uh, versus the loose guy on the third uh, on the third part uh, run out now uh, on a side note uh, the the death line let's say um, the death line I use this uh, this concept uh, from Carothers if you don't know it the death line in short is uh, check call the flop check raise the turn that's uh, kind of the death line now on any type of these boards doesn't matter whether it's one two or three I would be folding versus a tight guy yes you're folding top pair top gear get over it this tight guy is not bluffing you he either ha has uh, hit two pair on the turn or he already had the set uh, when uh, he called you your flop c bets uh, against the loose guy however uh, when he uh, I will be thinking about uh, okay, uh, you get raised on the turn. I would already be care very careful, but I would be thinking about his uh, raising uh, his raising size. If the raising size is really big, um, uh, it's, there's so many factors to keep into uh, account. Um, like on the third flop, on the third board run out against the loose guy, I would not be falling. Um, because the three of hearts didn't really help him uh, at all, so he's representing like pocket sevens and pocket deuces, and that's it. And aces and kings if he didn't three bet this uh, pre-flop, uh, which is pretty unlikely. Uh, so on the third flop, I would I would not be folding versus that death line against the loose player. So as you can see, I'm always taking into account the three factors: the board the position my uh, opponent, uh, what is he representing and from which hands I can get value from a loose guy on the uh, taking the death line on the third board run out can still have like uh, on the turn queen jack queen ten king queen thinking that his hands okay uh, I have top pair I have a good kicker uh, let's get uh, let's get the money in here uh, is, is the loose guy thinking uh, not realizing that he never is getting called by anything worse, but he doesn't know that. So uh, on that board run out, uh, I would definitely uh, not fold. Uh, when the jack, like on the first board run out, it's more close because he could have queen jack and now have uh, hit two pair, depending on his raising uh, size and depending on his uh, stack size. Uh, I might be folding if the raise is really huge. Usually. Uh, they, they raise really bad and they do like some kind of min raise I would not be falling for that and I would just call um, and uh, so the same uh, is, goes for uh, the second board run out okay uh, this was a first example where uh, we raised from the cutoff and uh, we got called from the big blinds uh, another uh, example is let's say uh, nit loose guy raises from early position again we have ace queen uh, this time on the button uh, assume we call uh, because uh, in six max games against the loose guy I would sometimes be three banning uh, ace queen here uh, against the nit I would never uh, three bet ace queen uh, versus an early position raise from uh, the nit just because we're folding out all the hands that we want to keep in uh, I want to keep in his ace 10 suited his ace jack um, uh, all his weaker type of hands uh, uh, I want to keep, keep in there if we three bet uh, a nit and he continues uh, we're just gonna uh, setting ourselves up to be playing against ace queen uh, which is uh, not really. We're setting ourselves up to play against ace, uh, ace king, uh, pocket jacks, and higher, and uh, that's not really what we want. Uh, the flop comes, so we call. The flop comes again. Queen seven deuce. The seven flop really dry, really dry. Uh, versus the knit, and this is actually easy. Versus a c bet from the knit, uh, I would never be raising. Uh, not even against the loose guy, uh, because most of the time these loose guys uh, are going to barrel you. Uh, 
um, and you're gonna make a lot of value uh, you're gonna make a lot of money just by calling down uh, and uh, against the net I would be calling down too there's no point in raising if he raises probably even falling queen jack uh, and king queen the only hands he's gonna continue with is like aces kings uh, if we race on this type of dry flop um, so I would be calling down and unless we hit an ace or a queen uh, then obviously I would uh, be happy uh, to raise and get it in uh, just because we have top pair uh, to uh, top two or uh, trips with the top kicker and uh, be really happy about it if the money goes in there now uh, let's say the board runs out again um, we call on the flop uh, the queen seven deuce flop uh, the king comes um, uh, if the knit bets again um, uh, on the king uh, I'll probably call on the king because he probably f knows that it's a good barreling card so I would call but on the river uh, if he makes a river bet uh, versus the knit uh, I would be falling here so uh, versus the loose guy I'll probably uh, just call down uh, depending on the size of his bets uh, usually their bet sizing of these opponents tells you a lot about their hand and if they make like really huge river bets uh, more than likely uh, you can safely fold uh, your top pair type of hand so as a conclusion here I just want to say that I play my top pair type of hands pretty conservative um, if I raise and I'm willing to get it in with a top pair type of hand, it has to be it ha it must be against a, a, a loose guy, uh, which I know uh, he is going to stack off. Otherwise, I'm just betting myself, and if I get raised, I am prepping myself to fold. And uh, if the other guy is c-betting, I'm rarely raising myself uh, for value, just because you're folding out so many of their bluffs and we want to get the most value out of their entire hand range and we're not doing this by raising and folding out like 90% of their of their preflop hand range uh, on the contrary and we're setting ourselves up to just get owned uh, by uh, by some another type of hands so uh, in these two examples I've only been talking about top pair medium kicker uh, uh, top pair top kicker what about top pair medium kicker well um, this is yeah this is not really a, a topic for uh, for for this session I, I would say uh, keep keep calling down uh, keep betting until they give you a reason to call but I would not go for three streets uh, of value anymore not even against the loose guy go for two streets and be happy about it uh, and the two streets you should be going for is uh, most likely the flop and the turn because their calling range usually of people is looser on the flop and the turn and uh, not on the river anymore because uh, on the river they either have uh, zero equity or they have like 100 percent of equity either the draws missed and there is no value anymore in betting so um, I would go for uh, two streets of value with top pair medium uh, type of kicker uh, type of hands the, of course depending on the board run out uh, obviously but uh, the, the times that we could, could go for three streets of value with top pair medium kicker is uh, I'm sorry I have to say, but it's 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 gone uh, these times. Um, is it a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's uh, is it a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. But uh, um, yeah, that's about uh, all I have to say. Okay, so now actually on to the topic <laughs> which I wanted to discuss is oh oh the draw comes in there now. First things first, um, when people have a flush draw, they don't fold it. Not even on the turn. Uh, so your bet sizing can be uh, quite big. People don't fold for uh, draws on the turn, and especially not flush draws. Straight draws once in a while. Uh, flush draws, they don't fold on the turn. Uh, so uh, what I want to say here, let's say uh, the flush draw comes in on the turn then you should not be checking behind I see this so often 
that people then there are already so three suits uh, on, on on the board and then they check behind because they're afraid to get check raised and have to fold now you can't really check behind because you have to protect your hand there are already three suits of one type on the flop uh, on, on the board excuse me so when you check behind the you're giving him infinite infinite infinitive infinite or infinitive and In, you're giving him infinitive odds to get there when the fourth suit comes there and that's not the, that's not what you want and another point is that the f opponent is actually more likely to call you down when a draw hit it because now he's act his equity uh, possibly went up. I'm gonna explain this more with uh, with an example uh, in the next slide. Another situation at the micro stakes is that people don't really bluff. So when they have hit their flush draw, then they're gonna raise it. And this is the death line. Uh, like they check call as a, uh, the death line I mentioned before. They check call the flop. They check raise the turn out of position. Believe me, you can safely fold your top pair type of hands. Either who knows, and they might have even have the, have the set on the flop. It's not necessarily that they hit the flush. They or you already might have been beat by some other type of hands. The death line means just fold it, fold your hand, forget about it, go over to the next hand. Um, I'm gonna explain this more with uh, this last type of uh, slide. Again, we have uh, ace queen. I'm trying to keep the the, the short segment a, a little bit um, simplified by choosing the same type of uh, situations. Again, well, we're in the cutoff, big blind calls, really dry flop comes in. Um, but now, uh, as I said, we are always betting here on this flop. But now, the eight of diamond. Con uh, well, no, no, it's not the same flop. Uh, I've made a, a flush draw here. So we have the queen of diamonds, the seven of diamonds, and the deuce of spades. Now, we are always betting here. We're never checking. Uh, we're betting there for value versus the nits and versus the, the loose type of guy. Um, the flop comes queens, and the turn comes the eight of diamonds. So the flush draw uh, gets there. Now, we should always be betting here. The reason for this is that imagine your opponent, even if he is the needy guy, now uh, he uh, was calling preflop with uh, queen 10, queen jack, king queen, uh, pocket 10s, pocket 9s, pocket uh, jacks, uh, stuff like this. And there's a high chance that he has like pocket 10s with the 10 of diamonds or uh, queen jack with the, uh, with the jack of diamonds, um, king queen with the king of diamonds. Uh, so his calling down range on the turn actually got wider and he's not gonna bluff to raise you because he has showdown equity. If he has queen jack of, with the jack of diamonds, he's not gonna raise you because he's smart enough to know that he's only going to get called by better hands. So we should be betting here because his calling downrange just got wider. Don't be afraid to bet. And oh, if we do get raised, well, so be it. Just fold and go to the next hand. I mean, forget about it. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, you folded a top pair type of hand on a on on a flush board uh, with who knows how many possible sets versus uh, a needy guy don't beat yourself up easy 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 fold uh, now if we do get called like uh, uh, if we do get called versus the nits and the, let's say the if another diamond uh, obviously comes off we just have to check behind on the river and if we get bent into we can safely fall but let's say uh, the deuce of uh, hearts comes on the river. Uh, we have to be careful about value betting the river versus the knit because now the knit realizes that he has top pair, medium kicker, or some medium pair type of hands with uh, a flush draw on the board. So value betting against the knit is going to be, um, how to say, uh, thin. Uh, against the loose guy, however, I would still be value betting there. No, no reason to get scared. He's gonna call you down with uh, all, all kinds of crap. And if and 
Uh, and if you get, do get raised on the river, well, be confident nobody check raises the river. Actually, the whole summary of this segment is people don't bluff raise the turn or the river without goods. And unless they show you or unless they convince you by doing this that uh, they have a better hand than you, you should be betting. And that's the, actually the whole, the whole point of this, of this segment. Um, there's one more uh, point. Uh, let's say we do have the Ace of Diamonds here in this. Uh, so we have like a redraw equity. Uh, we should definitely um, be betting versus um, the loose type of guy. And versus the knit, we should be thinking about checking. And the reason why we should be thinking about checking is, let's say uh, the knit uh, has like queen jack with no diamonds. He's gonna fall now if you uh, if you bet uh, on this on this turn. Um, if he has like pocket tens with no diamonds, he's gonna. You're not afraid for any card to come out. Essentially, if a diamond comes off, you just hit the. Uh, just hit, uh, just hit the nut. So you're not afraid, and you want to extract the most value out of his entire range. And uh, if there's no scare card for you to come versus a nid guy, it's, some it's sometimes better um, to keep his range wide. Let's say, um, let's say an extreme example: the f um, the flop comes. You have pocket aces. You raise the flop comes ace king deuce now if you see that there your the knit doesn't have any hand in his range almost which he can continue with unless he has got like ace the, the case ace with like a decent kicker like ace queen you're very lucky if he has ace king because then the money is going in but most of his hands like pocket pocket pairs are going to fold and uh, it might be better just to check them, check back that flop, and maybe let him take a stab with his pocket fives, uh, thinking that you are afraid of the ace, um, because you're never gonna get a lot of value versus a knit when you hit top set on an ace king uh, two's kind of flop. So uh, I'm getting sidetracked a bit, um, but essentially, uh, the, the segment was about what we do when we hit the draw and we have in, uh, we have position. Well, um, don't be afraid to bet. That's uh, actually people people will tell you when they got there, and uh, it's, there's no shame in in falling a top pair type of hand on a flush draw board, especially not versus a knit, and even not against uh, a loose guy. Uh, but the loose guy is going to make uh, like stupid. Uh, min raises, uh, which we can still call, especially when we have redraw equity. Like, uh, for instance, if you have re uh, redraw equity uh, and you have the ace of diamonds here, so it means that the uh, flop is queen diamonds, seven diamonds, two of spades, eight of diamonds, uh, and you uh, bet the turn, obviously, with the ace of diamonds and the queen of clubs, and the loose guy raises. I would not, and I repeat, I would not be re-raising to get it in. I would call him, and why would I call him? To keep his range wide. He might be bluffing with some sh complete crap hand, and there's really no scare card for you to come. So I would be calling him, uh, and that's what I meant by, uh, on the first slide, by uh, extracting the most value out of your opponent's entire hand range and that's that doesn't only go for the flop it also goes for the turn and goes for the river so okay uh, I think there was uh, quite some information uh, in this uh, in this short uh, slideshow I hope you've got something out of it um, if you have like situations, real life situations, you are really welcome to post them uh, in this thread and uh, we can uh, discuss them. Okay, so this was Colossus for uh, Grinder School. I'll see you guys later.